to the instruments of Boeing 757 gone crazy during its initial ascent. No external visual references, no airspeed indicator, no altitude indicator. Autopilot, auto throttle, not operative. And the pilots got more confused when the overspeed and stall alarmed simultaneously. October 1996 Miami International Airport, Florida, United States Aero Peru, Flight 603 was on its scheduled passengers flight to Santiago, Chile with a stopovers in Quito, Ecuador and Lima, Peru. The aircraft landed safely at Lima, Peru. The passengers were then transferred to another Boeing 757. From here, there were 61 passengers and 9 crew members on board. The passengers were composed of 21 who originated from Miami, 10 who boarded in Quito and the remaining passengers boarded in Lima. The captain was Eric Scriver Ladron de Guevara, 58 years old, who was highly experienced with 21,955 flight hours, including 1,520 hours on the Boeing 757. The first officer was David Fernandez Reveredo, 42. He had logged 7,954 flight hours with 719 hours on the Boeing 757. The aircraft operating was a Boeing 757-23A. It was manufactured in November 1992. The aircraft had flown 10,654 hours in 2,673 cycles. The aircraft took off for its final leg to its destination, Santiago, Chile. The first officer was pilot flying while the captain was pilot monitoring. aircraft was actually ascending. These alarms made pilots more confused, so they declared an emergency on tower frequency 118.1 and asked to be vectored by radar. ATC instructed them to change frequency to 119.7 for radar advice and assistance in returning to airport. Then the approach control gave the indications corresponding to the vectors needed for an ILS approach to runway 15.
The captain asked co-pilot to check the flight manual. As they began their descent, the airspeed in their instruments started to increase. Then the overspeed warning resonated. It means that they were speeding beyond the aircraft's design limit. Another warning which needs immediate action. The flight crew could see nothing out of the windows other than the pitch black night and the lights of the wings. There were no visual references. They could not trust on their instruments. All the alarms created chaos in the cockpit. The crew made contact with ATC and asked about their speed and stated that they were having problems with the controls. Actually, the pilots were having problems with flight instruments, not the control. ATC confirmed that the aircraft was 31 miles west of the airport at just over 10,000 feet with a speed of 270 knots. This was the first time that ATC had given the flight crew their ground speed. Meanwhile, the aircraft altitude indicator showed an airspeed of 350 knots. This appears that the crew forgot to retract the flaps because they were busy solving other problems. The aircraft was on heading of 330 degree parallel to the localizer and about to pass to the west of the Lima VOR. The captain continued with the idea of switching the autopilot on, which was not correct in this situation. As seen by ATC, the aircraft was at 10,000 feet. However, the altitude information displayed on the controller's screen was from the aircraft's faulty sensors. They continued their descent. They reduced the thrust and activated the air brakes to slow it down. But the overspeed alarm did not stop. The overspeed alarm activated due to misinformation provided by air data computer depending on static ports. Because of the reduction on thrust and activation of speed brakes, the speed decreased to a dangerous level. The crew were losing hope. The only one option for them is to be rescued by another aircraft. If any aircraft could fly alongside, that would help them to determine their airspeed and altitude. ATC informed the crew that an aircraft would be ready in 15 minutes to assist them. Pull up terrain. Pull up terrain. Pull up terrain. Pull up. The crew informed ATC that they had a terrain alarm and that the computers were uncontrollable. But in the radar display, the aircraft was at flight level 105 and was making a turn to the west 40 miles away. Instead of waiting for another aircraft to guide them, the crew tried to intercept the ILS in order to land while continuously asking about their speed. The aircraft was dangerously low but was showing 9,700 feet in their altitude indicator, which they informed to ATC. The air traffic controller confirmed the altitude 
and informed the ground speed as 240 knots. All the communications was lost after this point. The investigation was done by authorities from Ministry of Transport, Peru. According to the investigators, the maintenance staff did not remove protective adhesive tape from the static ports. The tape was not detected during the various phases of the aircraft's release to the line mechanic, its transfer to the passenger boarding apron and lastly the inspection made by the crew responsible for the flight. According to the mechanic responsible for the aircraft on that day of the accident, the inspection was carried out by the pilot in command. The pilot in command made a personal error by not complying with the procedures for ground proximity warning system alarms and not noticing the readings of the radio altimeters in order to discard everything which he believed to be fictitious. The co-pilot also committed a personal error by not being more insistent, assertive and convincing in alerting the pilot in command much more emphatically to the ground proximity alarms. This is all for now. Hit that subscribe button if you wish to watch similar videos in the future. Give a thumbs up if you find this video interesting. Follow us on Twitter for more updates. I'll see you in the next video. This is Sunil saying thank you for watching.